Hi everyone, Mike here. Microsoft have done a great job with adding Power Query to Excel on the Mac. However, compared to Power Query in Excel on Windows, when it comes to Get Data, there are several missing options. So this week, thanks to Bill Jellen, also known as Mr. Excel, I came across a free add-in called More Query for Mac. This add-in attempts to redress the balance by adding four additional data sources under Get Data, two of which I'm going to cover in this video. Before I do, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Suat Osgore, who wrote the add-in, and to Bill for sharing it on LinkedIn. I've added a link to download the add-in in the description below the video. As with any add-in, start by downloading and installing it. Once you've downloaded it, extract the More Query XLAM file from the zip file and save it somewhere. It doesn't matter where you save it, but be aware that if you later move the add-in file, the add-in will no longer work. You'll have to reconnect the add-in to Excel. I've created an Excel add-ins folder inside my documents folder, but as I said, you can store it anywhere. Launch Excel, click the Tools menu item and select Excel add-ins. Click the Browse button, navigate to the folder that the add-in is in, select the add-in, click Open and click OK. Now, on the Data tab on the ribbon, there are three more options. Clicking on From Web Service reveals two more options. Let me show you how they work, starting with From Table or Range. The From Table or Range enables you to load data into the Query Editor from a table or range of cells in the current file. So here I want to convert this data from a tabular or grid-like structure into a columnar list. And to do it, I can use the Unpivot feature of Power Query. So I'll click on a cell inside the data that I want to convert and click on the Data tab on the ribbon. Then click Get More Data from Table or Range. Make sure it's picked up the correct range and there's a tick in the box My Table Has Headers and click OK. The Query Editor is opened and what I need to do here is select the columns with the numbers in, click on Transform, Unpivot Columns and then close the Query Editor by choosing Home, Close and Load. And there is the data as I want it. So I just happen to select the Unpivot option to show you, but the key thing here is that we were taking data from a range or table in the same file, not bringing it in from another file. The second option to show you today is From Folder which makes it really simple to combine data from separate files stored in a single folder. Ideally, the data should have the same column headings and the sheet name should be the same across all files. So here I have three files, January, February and March, and they are all set up identically. The column headings are the same and each file contains a sheet called Sheet 1. And these files are all in a folder on my desktop. So what I want to do is bring those three files into this file, which is called Sales YTD, Sales Year to Date. Now the add-in doesn't allow you to browse to the folder. So before I start, I need to copy the folder's path. So I will open up the folder and then right click on Sales at the bottom of the Finder window and choose copy sales as path name and then close the finder window down. I'll then open this file sales YTD. This is the file where I want to bring the combined data into. Click on data, get more data from folder and paste in the path that I just copied and click on OK. It then opens up the Power Query Editor. I may have been asked to grant access or grant permission to that folder. I didn't have to do it this time because I had done it previously. But if you do get a message popping up and it's an Apple message, not an Excel message that asks you to grant permissions to the folder, then just go ahead and do so. 
So what I need to do here is exclude that file called DS store. And I'll do that by clicking at the drop down arrow next to extension and unticking DS store. So it's only going to import or it's only going to combine the XLSX files. Once I've done that, I can click on the button with the two little arrow heads, which is at the right hand side of the content column. It then asks me which sheet the data is in. And as I said before, you really have to make sure that the sheet names are the same across all the files. So I'll select sheet one, click on OK. And now it's going to combine the data in those files. And you can see that we've got the data January, February and March. So it's taken all the rows from those three files, combined them together. And then if I click home, close and load, it closes the query editor. Now let's imagine that it's got to the end of April and I have this file here called April, which is exactly the same structure as the other files. It's got the same sheet name. It's got the same headings. The only difference is the data is from April and I add that to the same folder. All I have to do then is click data refresh all and it brings the April data in as well. So the refresh basically goes back through that folder and brings in all the data from all the files that are in there that have an XLSX extension. Now you'll notice that it has created some additional sheets here. So what I'm going to do is just remove the three sheets that I don't need. And I'm left with just the sheet with the combined data. I can then save the file and close it down. So that's it. A cool add-in created by a member of the community. Thanks once again, Suet. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. Did you know I have a free newsletter and you can have it delivered straight to your inbox by signing up at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.